Here's a very interesting formula for pi. But how do we get here? Let's take a look at the series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of sine of nx over n. Why look at this sum? Because if we evaluate at pi over 2, we get our sum in question. Then all we have to do is figure out what this series equals will be all set. Getting there might be a little tricky though. We're going to have to use a different representation for sine. In fact, we'll use one of my favorites. We'll use the famous Euler's formula, e to the ix equals cosine x plus i sine x. Or if you like, instead of x, substitute nx. Now, I'd love to just replace the sine nx with e to the i nx. However, in Euler's formula, the sine piece is only the imaginary part of Euler's formula. So the way we get around this, we replace sine with e, however, we restrict it to only the imaginary part. And you might say, okay, so what? We've just changed one series for another. However, this time with the n in the exponent, rearranging things slightly looks like a fairly well-known power series. In fact, this is the Maclaurin series representation of natural log of 1 minus x, just with e to the i x substituted in. So the imaginary part of this series is negative the natural log of 1 minus e to the i x. Now our job comes down to evaluating a complex logarithm, and if you watched my video on how to do so, you'll be well prepared. We know any complex number can be represented in its polar form, r e to the i theta, where r is the square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. That gives us that the natural logarithm of any complex number is the natural logarithm of r plus i times theta. So we need to figure out what's r and what's theta for our complex value, in this case, 1 minus e to the i x. We need to figure out what's the real part and what's the imaginary part. Fortunately, again, Euler's formula comes to the rescue. e to the i x is cosine x plus i sine x. So we can reduce the inside of this logarithm to 1 minus cosine x minus i sine x. The real part is 1 minus cos x. The imaginary part is minus sine x r is the square root of x squared plus y squared, here the square root of 1 minus cosine squared plus sine squared, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, that's the inverse tangent of minus sine over 1 minus cosine. This is a pretty lengthy equation. Fortunately, if you recall, we were only concerned with the imaginary part of this. We don't even need to worry about the real part, we're only looking at the imaginary part, which is the inverse tangent of sine x over 1 minus cosine x. And if you string this all the way back to the beginning, this was connected to the original series by substituting pi over 2. If we plug in pi over 2, we get that sum in question. We also plug in pi over 2 to the other side. That's inverse tangent of sine of pi over 2 over 1 minus cosine of pi over 2. Using a little bit of trig knowledge, that'll be inverse tangent of 1, which is pi over 4. 